This video is part of a series. Complete the previous videos in this playlist before you start this video. The complete playlist information, the material and the code file information is given in the video description below. One of the most talked about topic in generative AI is RAG, Retrieval Augmented Generation. RAG has specific need or RAG has specific utility for the users. Now I'll first quickly recap RAG and then we will get into something called agentic RAG. So what if you mix agent plus RAG, how does that sound like? Let us try to understand or quickly recap RAG. First of all, let us try to understand what is even the need of RAG. What is the problem statement? I have some private documents that need to be asking questions about. So when I ask a question, I want my large language model to answer the question from private documents only. For example, I'm an organization and I have my clients and I have certain documents that are agreements between me and my clients. Let us suppose there is a service level agreement that is done between let's say Oracle and some other software provider company. And this is a very private documents between these two companies. Now, if I want to ask a question and the answer should be given by LLM and that LLM should use only that private document information. Now LLM, a large language model has the whole world of data, internet of data. It may not have, it may not have seen this data because this is a private document. It is not available on internet everywhere. But how do you make sure that LLM answers the question only from this document? Now, when you ask a question to LLM, Related to this document, according to the service level agreement, what is the cancellation policy or what is the policy for raising any ticket or what is the minimum minimum amount of time that is uh, given for responding to a particular query when a ticket is raised. Instead of LLM saying that I do not know the answer, LLM will try to give you some random answer. I want to LLM, I want my LLM to focus only on these documents for the answers rather than relying on the entire training data. I want my LLM to focus only on these answers or only on these documents. The documents weren't available during the model training. OpenAI may not have seen these documents. That is the reason why RAG is needed. Why RAG is needed? When you have questions related to private document repository, these documents are highly, highly confidential or private to you. They're not available publicly online. Then how do you get answers to these questions related to the documents? Reduced hallucinations. LLM suffered from a problem called hallucination. Instead of saying, I do not know the answer, LLM will try to generate and give you some answer. It will hallucinate that it does, it does know the answer. It will generate something and give you. So that will be a very generic output. Definitely, it will be a wrong answer. Now, you cannot put all these document inside a prompt. You cannot say that you go through this document and then answer that question. This whole document, you cannot give it inside a prompt. That prompt will be too lengthy. So if you have private documents like company's internal documents, secured private documents or confidential agreements, if you want to reduce hallucinations, that means you don't want LLM to give you some random answers when you ask questions related to specific documents. When you cannot include those private documents inside the prompt that you're asking, then the solution is given to you by RAG. If you want to get answers related to your private documents, RAG will answer you by looking only at these private documents and the answers will not have any hallucination. It will give you very specific, to the point, specific answers. RAG has five steps. We load the documents, the private documents that you're talking about. First, we load them. We split these documents into smaller chunks. I think splitting a better way to show that would be maybe this way. We split the documents into smaller chunks. That means a document maybe first thousand words, second thousand words, third thousand words like that. And then create embeddings, convert these into numerical values, store them in a vector database, store those numbers. So each of these chunks will be stored inside a vector database in the form of numbers. And those numbers are not any random numbers, they are embeddings. That means they literally mean those numbers are representative of the text and they carry the semantic meaning. Retrieve based on the user query. Once the user asks the question, that is also converted into an embedding. A vector embedding is something like it captures the information. The text information is converted to numbers, but semantic meaning is somehow captured using artificial neural networks. There is a way you can map these text values into numbers. Still, you can capture the whole information and semantic meaning. And then this question will be compared with 
the question that is asked here, the embeddings, the numerical values, they will be compared with all these embeddings and then the embeddings or the chunks that are similar to this question, they will be taken, they will be considered and the answer will be synthesized and the answer will be generated. So LLM will generate the answer, but from this set of documents that you have given, it will not go to internet and search for the answer. So the RAG code, right now I'm going to write the code for it, but quickly I'll walk through this. We will load the documents using this function. I'm going to load some, uh, I think this is Microsoft uh, quarterly results, some data. I think there's some meeting that has happened. So I want to ask questions related to 2025 20, Q4, whatever financial year 2025 20, Q4, that means last year's Q4 results. The transcript is given here and I want to ask a question particularly to related to this document. First, we will load the document. We will split the document. We will create the embeddings, store them in a vector database. And then I will create a retrieval Q&A chain. And then I'll ask the question, what is the LinkedIn revenue? When I say LinkedIn revenue, I don't want my LLM to go through some internet or generate it automatically. I don't want it to hallucinate. When I ask this question, I'm asking for the transcript that was Q&A, that whatever has happened related to Microsoft results, I want to ask, that I want to get the answers from there. So, and it has given me the answer, increase 9% to 8% in uh, constant currency or something like that. So let's get into our coding window. Let us start coding here. So there is the traditional rag, and then later on we are going to discuss agentic rag. Now we are talking about the regular traditional rag, or you can simply call this as, it is just a rag. We will get all the required packages like embeddings, vector databases, PI PDF loader, etc. Everything that is required. And then we will get into the coding part. So step by step, we will try to do this exercise. So step one is load your documents, load the documents. I'm going to give you this code file or you can also code along with me. But when you are coding, make sure that you keep the file that I have given you aside. It's not that easy to code uh, everything without any issues. First, you try to take help from this code. Later on, you can practice on your own for the assignments. So we will get this file, uh, the transcript, Microsoft transcript file, MS transcript file. So we will use the function wget. I have stored this file on my GitHub. So you can go here. This is the file that I'm talking about. I also have uh, downloaded it from internet only. So somebody has presented the Microsoft results. So we have asked a question about LinkedIn, right? LinkedIn, so LinkedIn. So I think uh, the answer that we have earlier, so LinkedIn growth somewhere around 30% uh, increased, uh, video uploads increased over 20% this year. So when I ask any questions related to LinkedIn, this 39 page, whatever report that we have, we want answers from here only. So once you get this file, you will be able to see this file here in the files on the left hand side, you should be able to see this file. So let me just recap this or transcript can be already seen. And then I will use the loader function. So once I get that physical file, I will try to use this loader function. My loader is equal to pi PDF loader, pi PDF loader, and then transcript file and the pages, all the pages. Maybe you can have a quick look at the number of pages uh, as per our previous when we opened it, there were nearly 39 pages. Was it 39 pages? Let me quickly verify that 39 pages, all the 39 pages we have it. I want to store all of them inside one large text. Let me call this as full length text. Full text is equal to empty right now. Let me loop over all the pages for page in pages. Full text is page plus page content. So if you want to really print the pages, lines, words, characters, you can get an idea that are 39 pages, 750 lines, overall 8,000 words and these many characters are there. So step one is done, which is load the documents. Let's go to step two, which is splitting the documents into smaller files. Step two is split the text that you have. So I will use a function called text splitter, recursive character text splitter. I'm taking chunk size as 300. I'm taking 300 characters. Chunk overlap is 10%. That means first chunk will be first set of 300 characters. 
instead of starting from 301, I'm starting from 270 itself. Let us suppose if you have asked a question, if the answer is right at the end of first chunk, we don't want to lose out on that information. We want to make sure that the information that is over the edges that should be preserved. So that is why chunk overlap is preferred. So that first chunk goes from zero to 300. Second chunk starts from 270 to 570. And then third chunk starts from 540 to 840 like that it will go. So if you see the length of all chunks, there are nearly 200 chunks. So overall the data that we have, we have divided into overall 200 chunks of data. So these 200 chunks will now be converted into embeddings stored inside the vector databases. You can directly store the full text also in the vector databases, but we want to convert that into smaller chunks and then store it in the vector database. So step three is create, create embeddings and store in vector database. You can use vector databases like uh, FIES, F-A-I-S-S. You can use FIES vector database. You can use a pine cone. You can use any of these vector databases. Let me use this particular vector database. This vector database is given by Facebook. Apart from FIES, you can also use Chroma database. That is also very famous. You can use any one of them. So I have installed FIES. Then we will create embeddings. My embeddings, OpenAI embeddings, and then I'm storing them in the vector stores. I'll give the chunks when I say embeddings. So you will have all these data, which is in the text form converted to embeddings, which is numerical form stored in the vector database. And then I will go to step four. I haven't really explained what a vector database here. I have just given a statement that a vector database or these embeddings are nothing but the numerical representation of the text data but how these numbers are represented from the text data. There is a complete session on word embeddings in our generative AI topic. I have also explained in deep learning. I have also explained in NLP course, but as of now, quickly, if you want to know what exactly is it, it is a way to convert your text into numbers, but somehow you keep all that semantic meaning. The relationship between the words can still be intact, even though you convert it into numbers using a very complex ANN way, we can convert text into numbers. Those are known as embeddings. Once you, create the embedding, store them in the vector database. You have several SQL, no SQL databases, relational databases. When you want to store these embeddings, vector databases are suitable for them. That is why we store them in particular type of databases called these vector stores. And then we will set up our retrieval Q&A. Q&A chain. In LangChain, everything is known as chain. Everything, all these different different models are connected using chain concept chain functions so we will say my llm is open ai my llm is open ai and then my q a chain is equal to retrieval q a retrieval and a from chain type use my large language model use this vector store and then use this chain type stuff that means once you get the answers you may get four or five related vectors to the question stuff all of them together stack all of them together when you are giving me the answer so that is what this chain is and once this chain is done you are up to the last step which is your final q and a rag based q and a step five is your rag based Q and A is your last step. So I would say my query is equal to what is the LinkedIn revenue? This is my question. This is my query. Now this query will be converted into a vector day, vector or embedding. And this embedding will be compared with all the other embeddings and then the answer will be retrieved from there. My response is Q&A chain invoke this query and this is your answer. So wherever there was LinkedIn, wherever there was LinkedIn, all this information will be gathered, answer will be synthesized and given to you. LinkedIn revenue has increased 9% and 8% in constant currency.
whatever that means that is what it has generated let's see if i ask another question i have another query that is what is the news about copilot adoption how people are responding to copilot because when you're talking about microsoft they're pushing this ai tool called copilot very aggressively what is the news about it the news that customers are adopting copilot at a faster rate than any other new microsoft 365 suit there's a strong usage intensity as shown in the week over week retention so there is a good news uh, copilot consumer app is also seeing strong growth engagement so you if you are planning to invest i think microsoft is a very good company because they are doing good job in terms of pushing copilot to most of the customers and a lot of users are liking it so that is a quick recap on rag once again i want to tell you that I'm just quickly going through them as a recap only. I'm not really explaining all these very much in depth. As I told you in our previous sessions, we have discussed this. I want you to, let's say, if you're totally, totally not getting it, still fine. The rest of the sessions, you can still get them. But if you are somebody who does, doesn't want to just go ahead like that with assumptions, I would recommend you to go through the Gen AI. There is a three day crash course on Gen AI that I have recorded. At least you try to go through that. Now that is a rag. Now we will go to agentic rag. Continue with the next video in the playlist. We are covering everything step by step. If you have any questions or the comments, please post them in the comments window below.